life after football because we talked about kind of you watching your, your former teammates and those guys what they did and keep keep building the program which I know you're a proud alum you've, you've got your Gamecock stuff on I'm sure you took a lot of pride in that because again you guys late those first couple of Spurrier teams I really feel laid the foundation you know what I mean it laid the foundation to what we saw 10 to 13 but stepping away from the field because again we talked off air you're a very well-traveled dude you live in New Zealand now and obviously I've followed you on Instagram for a while and you were talking about you thought you wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach in college. And now, I mean, I see you're doing like a lot of the CrossFit stuff, but just give people an idea, like what the life of Taylor rank is like now, because you've, you've bounced all over the world, really. I mean, what's, what's life been like for you after football, after South Carolina? Well, after, after I graduated, I, I got into strength and conditioning. I started off as a, as a unpaid intern at Oregon state university. And then I progressed to a, an assistant mm-hmm. position at Washington state university. Um, so you went back out West. Okay. I went back out west because that's where my dad was. That's gotcha, where gotcha. I had my connections and, and right. kind of just was home base. Um, but then I got a call from my cousin um, who was in Korea in the Army at the time and asked me to come out. I was like, all right, man, I'll come out there for a month. We have a school break, went out there. Mm. And that kind of snowballed. And I met some people that were on the military base that were doing this thing called CrossFit. And they were trying to do like some Olympic lifting and stuff. And so I just kind of started casually coaching CrossFitters on how to snatch and clean and jerk and do the Olympic movements that I was really familiar with from my time as strength and conditioning coach. And through that, I met some people at Reebok and they were opening up these, you know, fitness facilities. And I got on board with a guy and we ended up opening a facility in, in Seoul, South Korea, where I traveled to just to, to see my cousin for a month. Um, and then ended up meeting some people in Hong Kong, um, really good coaches that wanted to, you know, work in a facility. So I went to Hong Kong, opened a facility there, coach there. And then kind of the same thing took me out to Dubai, um, but uh, where I met my wife, um, who you know, we now have two kids here in New Zealand. So we went back to Hong Kong from there um, where I went back to work at that facility. But throughout it all, I've been doing strength and conditioning work with, you know, high school teams, rugby players, you know, runners, soccer players, as well as coaching in a CrossFit environment, um, coaching CrossFit classes. Um, and during my time in Korea, I played rugby with a, a New Zealand, a New Zealander, Kiwi guy named Nathan, who is now my business partner here. Uh, we work at and run a facility called Badger Health and Fitness. Um, down here in New Zealand, where we work with athletes from local high schools, uh, people who do CrossFit. Uh, We have a strength institute, which is a weightlifting facility uh, attached to us. So uh, yeah, we're basically just shifting 10 and doing fitness down here, having a good time. I I was going to say, what's been your favorite stop along the way? I know you were talking how great New Zealand is. I mean, is there like one place that stands out or like one of your favorite stops or places you lived or anything like that? I think it's probably going to South Korea. Um, it, uh, even though it's the first place I went, it's where I met, um, three, three of my real good friends that are here in New Zealand, in this city that we're in. Um, I was at a, a young point in my life. Uh, it was the first place I'd been. It was, it was so new, so alien, but so, I guess, so intriguing and interesting at the same time. Mm. And you really rally around because football came on Sunday mornings, like, like mm. Saturday night came on Sunday morning. Really? So we'd meet at the pub, you know, like 5 a.m., <laughs> right. <laughs> and we start saucing it up, waiting for, you know, the noon SEC game to come right, on. And right. my roommate in Korea ended up being an LSU graduate, Jacob Leonard, great dude. So we had the SEC camaraderie. Um, so that by far, that stage in my life and, and, and at that point, Korea was probably my favorite stop. Yeah, I, I was going to yeah, say, I, I watching, gonna say football watching football probably football to be so probably. interesting for you as far as, uh, you know, again, being over the time difference. And I was going to say, what, how, how great is technology? You're in New Zealand. I'm in Columbia. And it's like, we're, we're just having casual conversation. That's not kind of random, but either way, um, obviously again, you're a proud Gamecock alumni. And that, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, I wonder what times he's having to watch these South kind of games at, because obviously this year we're coming off of South Carolina's coming off and we're talking the Auburn win to get to two and two, which a huge win top 15 win. What, what, what time are you having to get like, if like South Carolina plays LSU this weekend at seven, like what time is that for you? So I guess that's we're talking noon kickoff for me. Okay. actually. So I'm you'd rather the game be at no- noon. Yeah. So, so you'd rather it be a noon kick then or no? Well, if, if, so say you're playing if South Carolina is playing at noon in the States, right. I have to wake up at 5. AM. Yeah. So it's between five, you, your kickoffs are between five and noon. Yeah, all of them. The, right. <laughs> Yeah, that's a no win right there. <laughs> You're like, hey, can you guys play at 4 a.m. one day for me? That'd be great. 